The following is a presentation of TFNN, The Trader's Edge, with your host, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the September 10th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's opening bell on The Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's what it's really all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call Mastering the Negative. You know, I say we need to welcome all experiences because you'll never know which one is going to turn everything on for you. Don't put up walls. You know, the same walls that keep out disappointment, guess what? Those are the same walls that will keep out happiness. Remember, there wouldn't be a positive without a negative. Everyone, you and I, we've got to get good at really two things. One of two things, really. Either planting in the spring or begging in the fall. I suggest planting in the spring. That's the better way. You know, there's no failure in pouring your heart, your soul, your energy into something that doesn't work because failure is just simply not trying at all. Now, each of us, we can turn nothing into something. We can turn pennies into fortune, disaster into success. The reason that you can do so many remarkable things, well, that's simple. It's because you are remarkable. You know, you talk about remarkable. Yesterday we kicked off. Yesterday was day one of our $10,000 TFNN virtual trading competition. Now, folks, that means that today, if you're listening in and you participate in this program, please go out and make sure that you place at least one trade today because that qualifies you for our five daily randomly drawn winners, each that will receive $100. They're announced during the uh, Tom O'Brien show. Remember, this contest only going to last through this uh, coming Friday. And as we take a look at the leaderboard, congratulations go out to N. Gill, who yesterday, he turned pennies into Many dollars. He turned pennies into $12,977. He's our leader in the uh, clubhouse at the moment. In second place, just a few grand behind, maybe about five grand behind, is D. Phillips. Yesterday, he made a profit of $7,385. But dollars. I, in fact, I received an email from Mr. Phillips last evening, and it said, this. He said, I give you credit. I'm in second place after day one and have learned the most from listening to you and watching your chart analysis. He said he's representing the great states of Michigan, where he's from, and Florida. He went on to say he took massive action, but he's still five grand back, so he's going to get on the horse and play catch up. Look, congratulations to both of those folks as well as everybody else and all the winners that we had, all the $500 winners, the $100 winners that we had uh, yesterday. Thanks so much for joining us in our $10,000 TFN virtual trading competition. Let's get things kicked off. Let's go take a look here at these markets. We've got futures pointing high, higher right now. The Dow futures up 84, trading out at 15.120. S&P up 10 and a half at 16.79. Nasdaq futures up about 21 at 31.85 and change. Russell 2000 up six at 10.50. King dollar, King dollar on the move. That's up about 12 ticks, trading out at 81.92. Biggest move in the currency market is in the Japanese yen. We'll take a look at that chart. Goldilocks back twenty two bucks right now, trading out at thirty six uh, thirteen sixty four. Silver off sixty six cents, trading out at twenty three oh five. Light sweet crude back at two dollars and seventy five cents. That's a beauty. That's now at one oh six seventy five. Looks like the one oh two area may be where it is headed to. Our call in number eight seven seven. Nine two seven six six four eight. If you give me a call, be happy to take a look at your, your stock chart or try to answer any possible question that I can. <clears throat> A quick peek across the uh, globe. We've got the uh, Nikkei. That was up 218 points. That was up 1.5%. We're going to go take a look at that stock chart because we know that's got two different buy patterns in there. Looks like the smaller pattern. We'll see how much of a retracement it has made thus far. You had the Hang Seng up another 1% last night. That was 226 points. And also, over about uh, about one in uh, 
one one and one tenth percent out there. You had the uh, Shanghai up twenty six uh, points over in Europe right now this morning. The FTSE is up fifty seven, and the DAX is up one hundred and fifty six, uh, about one percent and almost two percent respectively. Let's start off by taking a look. Well, let's go take a look at the Euro Japanese yen. This currency pair here. This is the one that tracks the U.S. stock market better than any other. It has made. In fact, it's more than made. It's done its 100% move of a move. It really did the 100% move of a move back here on August 23rd. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, that's a chart that you're looking at. For all of you newbies in the uh, den, thanks so much for joining us there because you get to see all of our charts in HD. If you are listening on your radio, your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, thanks so much for doing that as well. Remember, the archive of this show is on Channel 9, and you can get the live stream on your smarty phone-type device out there just simply by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. On the right-hand side, you will see a, a button with three little smartphones on it. Click on that. The show will stream live. We're looking at the Euro Japanese yen. Why? Because because it tracks the U.S. stock market better than anything else. It is, and this is a pattern that, as you know, if you've been watching us on Tiger TV, we drew this uh, well in advance, probably drew this pattern in right around September 1st or 2nd when we started taking a look at the possibility of this 1.272 butterfly forming, which would complete at about the 134-ish level, 133.96 to be exact. We can see you've got an A to B equals CD up. That takes you to the 133.50 right now. It's trade out at 132.99. Why is this important? Because it's a directional, real directional indicator as to which way the markets are going to go when this directional indicator gets off kilter, which means when it diverges from the direction of the stock market, the winner is, that's right, it is the currency pairs, because currencies, they rule the world. And right now, you can see the Euro-Japanese yen, it's at the uh, top of its, now this is a daily, daily chart that we're looking at. You've got to go take a look at the EKGs, which I consider to be the 30-minute charts out there to get an indication as to whether an equity is overbought, oversold. So let's actually just go move over to the 30-day uh, chart, 30-day, 30 30-minute 30 chart here for the uh, Euro-Japanese uh, yen. And we can see that it is in a overbought uh, condition out here. So at some point in time, we should see the market move sideways or pull back. In fact, last time that it got into this overbought condition was at 2.30 this morning. And at 2.30 this morning, what did it do? From about 2.30 to the time frame of, we'll call it about uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock this morning, it went ahead and moved sideways. That is the most bullish. Likewise, you can, in the reverse, it would also be the most bearish if this were happening in an oversold condition. But yet, this isn't overbought. This is what you want to see if you're bullish out there. So how does that translate to our markets? Well, excellent question out there. So now let's go take a look at the EKG of the S&P 500, the ES Mini out here. We can see that this, too is in what? That's right, it's in the extreme overbought condition. It's been here since about 4 o'clock this morning because if you take a look at let's go back, let's just step back just a tad further because if you come into about the 2.30, 3 o'clock, uh, 4 o'clock uh, close time frame, you can see the EKG, the ES Mini, utilizing that relative strength indicator, that 14 period relative strength indicator, what? The market was in overbought status. And in order to work it off, what did it do? It just simply digested food. It set, in fact, what it did it it was the market was kind of thinking that hey this is thanksgiving because there's two football games on what is with this monday night football you just get done with one game and then another one comes on at 10:30, 11 o'clock at night holy cow well it's great if, of course if you live on the uh, west coast out there well you know on uh, new year on thanksgiving there's always two football games one of those being the detroit lions out there and so what the market did here was it just simply probably it probably was watching a great tennis match that was a great tennis match for sure i don't know Nadal, he's looking pretty darn strong, isn't he, folks? If you like tennis, that was a great match there yesterday. In any event here, what we can take a look at is the market just simply moved sideways. It sat on the sofa, moved sideways, pulled back, and then began its next upthrust move right at about the time frame here. really gave the signal right at 10.30 last night. Of course, it moved sideways just a bit before it decided to take off. So now what are we taking a look at? We're taking a look at a market here that is in an overbought condition. No, don't jump on board. Now, look, you're going to see some short covering rallies coming in here as the market opens. It's 9.17 a.m., but, you know, between 9.30, 9.45-ish, maybe up to 10, there ought to be some kind of short covering rally. I would uh, think out there 
Don't be buying into that. You want to wait for some kind of pullback. You want to wait for some other kind of signal out here. But as you can see on the 30-day, uh, on the intraday chart here, no reason, in my opinion, to jump on board. You want to see what that next retracement or move sideways looks like. That is on the 30-minute chart. If we jump over and we take a look at the daily chart, get a feel for what's going on inside the daily, what we can see here is that uh, sub-correction uh, channel, that downtrend channel that the ES Mini was in, just like the S&P 500 and many others out there. Well, we saw a breakout of that this was yesterday as it closed out at 1671 1674 was your 0.618 retracement we're above that right now what does that set up well right now what the es mini is doing it's tackling that august 15th downdraft level that high 1682 the exact high that we have seen so far has been 1681 and a quarter that's what it's tackling Looks to me like it wants to be able to trade up to that 1688 area at least because that is the .786 retracement. But remember, when we started off the show, we were looking at the Euro Japanese Yen. And that's got a butterfly pattern, a 1.272 butterfly. If we go switch back to that here real quickly. And this is a beauty because it has made several butterfly patterns. And that seems to be the soup du jour for the Euro Japanese Yen as it goes ahead and it wants to make its move to 133. Maybe when it gets up there, maybe that becomes a time to take a look at uh, shorting the uh, marketplace out here. But right now, it's full steam ahead, full steam ahead as soon as the market digests this overbought condition. 877-927-6648. We get back. We'll go take a look at Goldilocks and High Ho Silver. We'll also take a look at that slippery, black, light, sweet, crude because it's pulling back as well. It's down 2.5% off 275. We'll be right back, folks. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone silent. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, 
the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. It's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It absolutely is better when we're together, folks. Right now, Dow Futures up 95 uh, points. We're going to go check in on uh, the uh, commodity sector here. We'll take a look at Goldilocks and silver. Gold back 21 bucks and change right now. Trading out at 1365.30. So what do we know about gold? Number one, we know that it completed an A to B equals CD up. That A to B equals CD pattern, the A point coming off of the June 28th low. That was your A point. That price level being 1179.40. The B point out here on July 23rd out at 1348.70. Makes a shallow retracement, uh, that retracement about probably a point uh, three eight two or so, right down on August the seventh, gets down to a low twelve seventy one eighty, and then moves up. As I mentioned yesterday, I would be bullish gold if it closed above fourteen hundred. Did it close above fourteen hundred? Absolutely not. It did not. In fact, what it's doing right now as it's pulling back. Contract-wise, uh, it's done about 63,000 contracts here, going against 175, the last swing point, which was from a couple days ago, on September the uh, 6th out here. But what if we take a look at this, now we take a look at, I'm going to get rid of the A to B equals CD right now. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up just a tad. We'll do things one thing at a time out here. Number one, if we take a look at retracements, that's coming off of the low, June 28th, all the way to the high that was put up here on August the 28th. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the 1400 bucks as well on that line there, make it real clear out here. The dead cat bounce is at 1336.70. A normal retracement would take you down to the 0 .618 area, 1276.70. But what we've got to do here, what's incumbent upon us, is to try to identify normal areas of support and or resistance out here. Well, you've got this little potential resistance line. We'll see if this is going to hold. This was with the bearish engulfing candle that formed out here coming back to July 24th. So the first area where I would take a look at natural areas of support and resistance, we'll go ahead and we'll put this in, uh, well, not dash blue. We'll put this in black out here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the retracements for the moment on here just to clean the uh, stock chart up. So as gold pulls back into this 1348.70 level, that was a bearish engulfing candle that had uh, formed. It should have really acted as it. And it can be, what you want to be able to do is you need to be able to move these things up and down just a, a tad here just to really understand where the actual support resistance line is. And I'm going to say it's really right about there. So the candles give us the area where the bulls or the bears are hanging out. We can see as price had moved up back here on August the 12th, got up to a high of 1335.70. That seemed to act as resistance. And once it broke through, which was on August the 15th, that area should have be that should area should become support. So we're taking a look at this potentially as being that first support area. If in fact that breaks, then what you need to look for is where's the next level of support. And that becomes very simple. Not only is it the swing point down here from August the seventh in the twelve seventy one to twelve eighty nine level, but this also happens to be one of those reversal patterns. This is called a morning star, three river morning star, named after Oda. Nobunaga, one of the great uh, generals in uh, Japan out there. And as we take a look at that, says that support should be found at about 1271.80. So our price target area is here to be looking for possible support inside Goldilocks is right around 1271 all the way up to the 1348 level. We'll see how gold reacts as it gets down there. Let's go take a look at the high ho silver. 
Let's do the same kind of analysis on this uh, for you as we take a look at silver. We know that silver also creating a similar type pattern, A to B equals CD, only it did more than a one-to-one. -one. If we take a look at that pattern, uh, the A point on this is going to be the June 28th low, 1818, makes a uh, run up to the high on July 23rd out at the uh, 2059 level, then comes all the way, makes a point six one eight retracement on August 7th. You can see it makes more than a one-to-two A to B equals CD. What stops silver in its track was this 200 period exponential moving average that was on the trading session here of august the uh, 28th now if we go from the uh, swing point low to the swing point high you can see the dead cat bounce which it has not hit just yet is at 2247 right now trading out at 2306 out there if we try to take a look at natural areas of support or resistance, it's really at it about right now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the retracement levels. But if we just take a look at this little line of attack out here, I'm going to make this a black line. We'll go ahead. We'll move this up and down. We can see that we had a little uh, bear sash candle that came in right here at this level, right about right down in there. That would make uh, support right about in that range here. Uh, in this case, where we would be looking for one of the first lines of support inside of uh, silver out here, right in about the price range, I would say, of about 2275 or 2306 out there. If that area fails, where is the uh, next level of support? Well, guess what, folks? It basically takes us all the way back down into this range here. We had a bullish engulfing candle, last one, last bullish candle out here, right around the August 2nd area, right around $20.26. There's a couple gaps out here, those gaps in Themselves. There's one, I believe, between August 12th, let's see, the low 2062 and the high here of 2058. So between August 9th and August 12th out there, we've got a little bit of a gap as well. That should act as support right about 2062. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month.
Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. To the races. We got the Dow up 75, traded out at 15,138. S&P up nine at 1680. Composite up 17 points at 37.23. Russell 2000 up four at 10.50. Apple off about uh, two bucks and change. Microsoft up 20 cents. Google up two bucks. Cisco up 13 pennies. Intel up 18. Leading the charge, the upside. It's Netflix. Netflix up six dollars and about six dollars and 25 cents, just below. Them in second place is five below. Sounds like five above. They're having a heck of a, a good day out there. They're up 15% this morning. Visa being added to the uh, Dow. You've got Visa, Goldman Sachs, and uh, Nike. Holy smikies out there. Those three are going to be added to the uh, Dow. I believe, I believe that's September 23rd. Uh, so those stocks here, uh, there's going to be uh, changes in and out of the ETF structure. So we should expect to see that. Now, they're replacing stocks like HP. Bank of America, and Alcoa out there. So those stocks ought to see a little bit of pressure as uh, the uh, ETF structures get reworked out there. So you got Goldman Sachs up 460, Visa up 470 right now. YY Inc. Not sure what YY is, but they're up six percent right now. It's up two dollars and seventy cents. IBM up a buck seventy. That's up one percent here. Celgene Corp. C E L G up a buck eighty one. Sina S I N A up two sixteen. Leaders in the clubhouse to the downside out here. Model N Inc. M O D N is the ticker symbol. Now they're off thirty three percent. What the heck is behind that? Is there some kind of buyout? Let me see if I can find any news on M O D N. I see nothing out here. We'll take a look at that stock chart. P V H is off three percent. Uh, Neurocrine Biosciences N B I X they're off thirty percent this morning. Uh, you've got Urban Outfitters U R B N that's off ten percent. Gulfport Energy that's interesting. I was taking a look at we're going to take a look at Gulfport Energy because it's had a heck of a move. I was actually looking at that specific stock this morning and saying I'd like to buy that on a pullback. Now we need to go take a look and see what is uh, the meaning behind today's move. The uh, ticker symbol out there G P O R. G-P-O-R is the uh, ticker symbol, so we're certainly going to write that down because I remember looking at it earlier in the wee hours of the uh, morning. Also to the downside, you got Conagra. Uh, they're off about 260. That's about 10%. HD supply holdings off 10%. Uh, so we've seen quite a bit of volatility. Speaking of volatility, we're going to take a look at the uh, VIX index out here right now. That is traveling out at 1504. It's going to be an interesting day for, as uh, Baz likes to call it, Vixie out here, because the 50-day exponential moving average on this is $14.84. Uh, it's traded as low as 1489 You get a close below 1484 today, folks. That's where some bullish legs really start inside these uh, markets. So if it can't do that... 
You've got to say, hmm, something to think about. At least that's what I would like to say out there. Now, let's go. We took a look at uh, silver, gold. Let's go take a look at light, sweet, crude, bonds, natural gas. We'll finish those up. Then we'll go take a look at the markets out here. Uh, if we take a look at light, sweet, crude, it's trade at 107.02. Got this nice little consolidation range. We'll see if it can get all the way down to the bottom now. I'll give you some trades. You know, if you are, uh, you know, inside our $10,000 TFN virtual trading competition and you're just looking for a trade out here, one you might want to consider here is light, sweet, crude. In fact, uh, not, not, maybe not today here, but if it can pull back a bit further, maybe get down and test this 50-day uh, exponential moving average. You know, the low of the consolidation range is about 102.50. But what I do notice is the last time, the last thrust down there, which was on September 3rd, it tagged that 50-day uh, exponential moving average, which right now, is priced out at the range of about 105.17 out here, uh, so and it's trading at 107.08. So it's around the 105.17 range to 102, 102.50-ish, uh, where you could start taking a look at a, a potential long trade inside light sweet crude. If we go take a look at the bonds, the 30-year Treasury, let's go see what they're doing. Looks like they're going to come back and they're going to at least test the uh, low of September 6th, which is 128.12 out there, but just simply no traction. As I said yesterday, a close above 130.02, and I would be cons I would consider taking a long position via TLT inside the uh, 30-year Treasury. Yes, you're hearing it right. You can get off your chair. That's what I did say. You know what? Uh, what I do know, and this is a very similar setup to uh, gold. Can't tell you why. But I can tell you what I do know here, and that is this. As you know from from gold standpoint, uh, if you were listening, if you had been listening to the show, I said, look, the commercial traders and we had that that trade had gotten so lopsided, and what the big money was doing. I'm going to go see if I got the stock chart actually in my screen here. It might be easier if I can illustrate it visually out here. Let me see if I've got the. It's a weekly stock chart. I haven't updated here, but I pay attention to the CFTC COT date all the time. So here we'll we'll pull this back. Here we here we have it. Now it hasn't been updated for a few weeks. That's why you see this straight line going across here. But what we did see was we saw the non-reportables. That's a group of traders like you and me out here, the individual traders. And we typically stay at a party a little bit too long out here. And so that's why you want to be paying attention to this. Inside of gold, you had the commercial, the non, the, I'm sorry, the non-reportable traders had the largest net short position ever, ever. And at the same time, you had the commercial traders, the big money traders, and they were also at their they're, they're very close to being net long, which he, I can't. Rec I think the last time we saw them in a net long position was back in 2001 out here, and so they were giving us the signal that uh, gold was going to form some type of at least some type of a significant bounce out there. And guess what? We've got the exact same thing going on inside bonds. I know it's hard to believe out here, and bonds are in a bear market, but what we can say is there could be a very significant bounce, a bounce that could take you at least all the way back up to the consolidation level around the 135 level. However, what the CFTC data doesn't show you, and that's why you need to understand patterns out there. You need to understand candlesticks, A to B equals CD patterns, the whole kit and caboodle. You might as well have them all in your arsenal out here. Though, with the what the what the data is telling us, we're going to see a bounce. It's going to be a big bounce. Now, when we've got to use other tools to be able to go ahead, and you need to make sure you're using proper money management out there when you're taking a uh, trade. But uh, you know that's what we're seeing now. Maybe that begins if the uh, if in fact the uh, VIX can't get below that 50-day exponential moving average. We've got to take a look at other potential trade setups out there inside of the uh, marketplace. In any event, let's uh, finish this off by take a look at natural gas. I'm going to go take a look at that Gulfport Energy and a few other things here. Natural gas had a, a key reversal session. On September the 5th, that was at the highs, just that it had a key reversal session on August the 8th out here. Nice bearish engulfing candle as well. And so this is now just what it looks like forming an a, to, a small A to B equals CD down. Now, that's a beautiful thing. I was in this uh, trade here inside natural gas and actually looking to get back in. And the next pattern that could be forming here inside nat natural gas would be a nice little Gartley buy pattern. Now, if we take a look at, well, I don't know what I did there. If we take a look at where that Gartley buy pattern could be setting up, let's go take a look. Let me get rid of this here. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the uh, retracement from the low to the high out here. We'll see where good old sweet 618 is about $3.35. Let's take a look at possible expansions of this potential B to C point that has been set up here so you got about 344 so that's a 336 so we take a look at a couple of patterns out here and and this is let me uh let me do this here let me see if i can do this 
Let's see. There we go. I want to get rid of the retracements and just have expansions. There we go. So I'm going to blow this up on my screen out here. So potentially an A to B equals CD. Now, I'm suggesting that because of this little key reversal bearish engulfing that we saw up here on the uh, September 5th area. And so we see a little bit of a move down, bounce back up. Yesterday's bounce was on lighter volume inside natural gas. So that's a nice thing out here. The 1 to 1 A to B equals CD takes it about uh, 342 level. A nice 1.618 expansion of this uh, B to C leg. That'll take us in at about 344. So right around there is one of the first places that I would be paying attention to for some type of reversal. Now, Sweet 618 is down quite a bit uh, lower out here. And if you can get down to the 335 level, then 333 is probably your area where you would be taking a look at a nice, another nice uh, Gartley buy pattern. So it would look like this. If we take a look at the uh, math and the geometry, the sacred geometry on here, there is a larger pattern. If that's the one that sets up a pullback to about 337 and we get a reversal signal, that would be a really nice, because what this will do here, folks, this will likely set up the next buy point. This will set up a larger A to B equals CD up. And that is inside natural gas. But it's got a long way to go before it gets down there. And we need to monitor first the break of the B point, which would be September 6th, that low of $3.51. So let's see if it can do that and give us another buying opportunity inside of natural gas. Now, let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. I want to go take a look at... Uh, what was it? It was uh, G Gulfport Energy. I'm pretty sure that was the stock I was looking at. I'll know when I see the chart here. G-P-O-R. Whoops. G P O R is the uh, ticker symbol. And yep, it absolutely was the uh, stock chart that I was uh, looking at out here this morning. It's had a uh, nice, well, that's interesting because there were some other things that I would have had drawn on here. So, but this is, yeah, this is the stock chart. I know it was Gulfport Energy. In any event, let's go take a look at it. Right now, it is gapping down this morning here. And we've got to make sure this doesn't have volume off of the top. You can see here that it was in the extreme what? In the extreme overbought condition. So I wasn't biting, but I did like the uh, move up. I did like uh, the move up here. Uh, and so we'll see if this area where it should pull back to, which would be right around the August 7th area, if it can pull back there on lighter volume. That is 7.9 million shares out there. And so far today, it's done 564,000 shares after doing a high yesterday with 1.6 million shares. So I don't like the uh, pullback here just yet but I still do like this stock setup now I didn't really go take a look at the uh, monthly and the weekly out here we're going to go ahead and do that right now let's take a look at the weekly chart on this and yeah that's a beauty everybody for the most part in this equity here is in a nice profit position I don't think let's see if the B point here of this large rate of B equals CD on the weekly B point would be May 3rd 5.7 million shares is what was, uh, oh yeah, it's a beauty out here, because you had a confirmed A to B equals CD up 5.9 million shares when the B point was crossed August 2nd, 2013 out there. So that is uh, pretty nice. If we take a look at that A to B equals CD, your A point on this, you'd come all the way back down to June 29, 2012, $15.79, all the way up to the uh, B point on May 3rd out at 54.07. Not really much of a retracement out there at all, but that A to B equals CD on this could take Gulfport Energy up to about 84 bucks. It's at 61 right now pulling back. So let's uh, keep our fingers crossed that we don't have substantial volume off of the uh, top here on the uh, daily chart. But this is one you might want to go ahead and put on your watch list out here. Uh, GPOR is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go take a look at uh, some of these other stocks here. Popping and dropping. Let's look at some of the stocks that are moving to the upside. Let's go take a look at F5. Uh, or F5, five below, I should say, not F5 networks. F-I-V-E is the uh, ticker symbol. And five below, which is uh, up 14% here this morning. Let's go see what it's trading into, if anything. It's made a 1.618 uh, expansion of a set of swing points here this morning as it opened up. So it looks like I have looked at this stock chart before. Uh, give me a moment. So it's made a, it's made, so this is an IPO. We take a look at some of the different patterns inside this equity here. It goes back to July 19th, 2012. The low out there is 25 bucks. That was your A point. Your B point on this took us all the way to the high that was made on October 1st, 2012. That was out at $40. One of Basil's round number highs goes ahead and makes a retracement. What kind of retracement do you ask? Good question. Let's go take a look at it. If we take a look at our A to B, this made a retracement of 0.786, about as perfect as you can get. 2821 would be that number. It got down to a low. 
low of 27.73 out there. That formed the C point. They had a nice little sign of strength that came in this thing on November 30th, 2012. They went to 1.27. First, it made a 1 to 1A to B equals CD, and then it's consolidated sideways. Nice gap up this morning, but it's completing a couple of different patterns out here. It's completing the 1 to 1.272A to B equals CD. Let's get rid of that. Let's go get rid of the uh, retracement uh, the tool. Let's see here, the Fibonacci. Let's get rid of that. And uh, let's, in fact, let's get rid of a couple other lines out here. We'll just clear this up. We'll just take a look at the FIB expansion and contraction numbers. So take a look at this. It's made a nice 1.6 when it got up to a high today of 47.92. Right now it's trading out at 47.37 out there. We can see the last time it made close to a 1.272 expansion. It says 1.23 out here. That's close enough, right, for, uh, for our type of uh, work here. So we ought to see this thing go ahead and pull back. But uh, so far not too bad of a look it's had it's had some uh, it's had some tough days out here such as the day of june 26 but let's see how this thing pulls back here's another one to maybe go ahead and put in your uh watch list of uh, stock charts but this thing here should begin to uh, pull back as it's made this nice move up this morning but it should run into some resistance of this little butterfly that it has created 1.618 butterfly cell i'm not saying to sell this thing folks i am just saying watch it put it on your list and watch a, a potential pullback in this uh, let's go take a look here at Goldman Sachs. Let's go see what uh, kind of buying pressure we've got inside. GS is the ticker symbol, by the way. So it's up uh, this morning, trading out of 164.81. Let's go see what it is trading into. Its uh, most recent swing point out here on Goldman Sachs is the uh, day of August the 5th. Volume out there, 2.6 million shares. As it uh, moves into that so far today, we, we have seen here is 1.1 million shares. So it's got nice volume inside this. Now, where are the bears hanging out on this? Well, number one, this little three-candle pattern that we're looking at right here, this is the sessions of uh, June 7th, June 10th, and uh, June 11th out there. That is what's called an evening star. Earlier, we took a look at the morning star pattern out here. Well, guess what? That's an area of resistance, and we saw this little bearish engulfing, bear sash candle, really, that took place here on August the uh, 6th. So you've got a resistance point that Goldman Sachs is moving into. However, it's moving into it with volume out there. We'll see if this can act as a natural resistance area and see if this will consolidate here for a bit. That's on Goldman Sachs. 877 927 Be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. 
Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Welcome back, folks. And again, and just a reminder for all those that signed up for our TFNN $10,000 virtual trading competition, make sure you get in and you place a uh, trade today. That way you're qualified today. It doesn't matter whether it's a winning or a losing trade out there, uh, but uh, you will qualify for one of our five randomly drawn folks that are going to each win $100 uh, today. And congratulations to uh, all that are out there that are playing in the uh, game. Looking forward to seeing today's results out there. Speaking of results, let's go take a look here at the XLK. That is the uh, technology sector with inside the S&P 500. Very critical for us to be paying attention to this for any kind of uh, breakout here. So we're going to take a look at you know the heavily, most heavily weighted sector with inside the S&P 500. Right now, it's traded out at 32.33, and it is up over above an area of old resistance. Now. The old resistance that we're taking a look at really was established here. Now, first we had a swing point that takes us back to uh, May 20th, and uh, not really a, a reversal signal out here from a bearish standpoint, but it is a swing point, and you want to note those swing points. Now, that swing point did act as, in fact, a, a resistance level when we had price move up here on August the 5th, and then you did have a bearish engulfing candle that took place here on August the 6th. This went ahead and engulfed the prior body. That sets up your resistance at 32.32. Well, Guess what? It's trading above 32.32. And one might say, hey, Steve-O, is that an actual breakout from there? And the question, the answer to that is no, because there is a, it's a breakout from that level of resistance, but there's resistance overhead. So as your pilot, you still need to keep that fastened seatbelt sign on. Why? Because if you take a look at this, now this is today is truly the uh, war of gaps out here. We've had gaps up, gaps down. Uh, the gaps down inside the uh, XLK happen to have formed here from August 14th to the 15th. Well, that's a bearish reversal system on that gap down, but you also formed a three-day evening star reversal pattern. So that really sets up resistance at the 3247 level. You get a close above 3247, that will have taken out the old resistance, and old resistance should what? That's right. Should become new support out there. And that new support, you would have the largest weighting structure with inside the S&P 500 breaking out above an area of resistance. Now, volume at that swing point is 5.3 million shares. Yesterday's move up, yesterday was also a little bit of a gap up, 5.7 million. Going into 5.2, that's pretty good. Also, you know, we did have 6.8 million shares to the downside, but let's take a look at what it's actually doing here right now. Today's trading 
493,000 shares. Now, if math serves me correctly here, we could just take 493, uh, double it. So we'll just call that a million shares times six, six and a half. That would be six to six and a half million shares going after 5.2. Now, the level of volume shouldn't necessarily keep up at this pace out here, but we do want to watch it as the XLK travels into this swing point. Now, it close into 3226. Volume or not today says that the XLK should go test that high at 3247. And quite frankly, it should go test that high no matter what to give us some type of indication as to whether or not the market's going to consolidate, pull back, fail at that level or what. Of course, you've got the other weighting structures inside the S&P 500, and we'll take a look at uh, some of those during the uh, trade during the next hour's uh, trading out here. Uh, no real possibility for the uh, bulls to uh, take control, or the bears to take control of the uh, market today. Uh, the bears would need net declining issues of 2,474 in order to actually do that. That would be one heck of a key reversal session. I do not expect that to occur. So we're going to be paying attention to the VIX for sure. Remember, the number on the VIX to be paying attention to today is a price level of 14 about 1483 right now it's trading at 1490 you get the vix below that and guess what folks the next leg up in the market may have just really confirmed itself hey thanks so much folks uh be uh look forward to seeing you tomorrow remember you have an amazing power within yourself the best thing about that power folks the best thing about that power well it's just simply you can do anything you want have a great tuesday look forward to seeing you soon take care folks What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.